This series of reactions is designed to show you that if we start with a certain amount of copper and react it in a number of different ways, no matter what we do, as long as we don't cause any experimental errors, we should end up with the same amount of copper that at the end as we had at the beginning. This is called the conservation of mass. We start with a piece of copper which has been pre-weighed and placed in a beaker. To that we add a solution of nitric acid. As the nitric acid goes into the copper, the solution turns from a colourless solution to blue and a brown gas is released. This is quite toxic, smells a little bit like chlorine, and so we have to do this procedure in the fume cupboard. The resulting products of the reaction are nitrogen dioxide gas, copper nitrate and water. We can show this in an equation where the copper and nitric acid are our reactants and the nitrogen dioxide, copper nitrate and water are our products. For those of you who like to work in symbols, here's the symbol equation. You notice that we have to have four nitric acid molecules and it will produce two nitri nitrogen dioxide molecules and two water molecules. This is all about our balancing equations. The second reaction we did involved turning the copper nitrate into copper hydroxide. To do this we had to add sodium hydroxide. The solution was poured in and the clear blue solution turned into a dark blue jelly. We had to do this in an ice bath because that copper hydroxide is quite unstable when it gets warm and it tends to decompose. So by doing it in an ice bath we can keep it nice and cold. We can write an equation for this reaction where the copper nitrate reacts with sodium hydroxide to give us copper hydroxide and sodium nitrate. You can see from the symbol equation that all that's happened here really is that the copper and the sodium have swapped places, the sodium joining onto the nitrate and the copper joining onto the hydroxide. In this reaction mixture there was actually another reaction going on at the same time and that reaction was sodium hydroxide reacting with the excess nitric acid that was left over. The products from this reaction are sodium nitrate and water and this, as you can see, is sodium hydroxide nitric acid is just an acid-base reaction. Once we had our copper hydroxide, the next task was to turn it into copper oxide. Now for some of you, leaving the copper hydroxide overnight, you might have found that it, as the room was warming up, it actually turned to the black copper oxide naturally. But for the rest of you, you might have had to heat it that last little bit to get it to turn into copper oxide. The equation for this reaction is just copper hydroxide going to copper oxide and water. And again in symbols we just have the equation as shown below. Part 4 of the reaction involved turning that black copper oxide into so copper sulphate which is a pale blue colour. And to do that we had to add some sulfuric acid. As the sulfuric acid went in and with lots of stirring the solution finally went to that nice clear blue colour. The other product of the reaction was water and since we already had water in the solution it's not really going to make any difference to the appearance. The symbol equation for this reaction is another acid base reaction where the sulfuric acid is our acid and copper oxide is acting as a base. Copper sulphite is our salt and water is the other product of the reaction. The last step of the sequence to, was to add some zinc to the copper sulphate to try and push the copper out of the, the copper sulphate and replace it with the zinc. This would give us our free copper in solution. While this was happening the solution started bubbling a lot and it went clear. Zinc sulphate when it dissolves in, in water is a clear solution and copper is obviously the copper metal that we see. During this reaction copper sulphate uh, reacted with the zinc because zinc is much higher on the reactivity series than the copper so it pushes the copper out of the copper sulphate and takes its place. We could have done this with any other metal that was higher than copper on the reactivity series as long as it wasn't going to have another strange reaction. So for instance we could use uh, perhaps iron which is higher than copper on the on the reactivity series and that would have given us iron sulphate and copper but we couldn't use sodium because sodium reacts with water quite violently so you have to be a little bit selective with the, the metal that you choose. There's another reaction going on here at the same time as well. Because we had excess acid in there, we need to get rid of that. And that sulfuric acid that's left over 
also reacts with the zinc to give us zinc sulfate and the um, bubbles of hydrogen. Those of you who felt the container would have felt that it got quite hot and this is one of the products of the reaction as well. The heat is being given out. Now you might wonder why we had that zinc reacting with the sulfuric acid. At the end of this experiment we have to weigh our copper so we don't want to have any excess zinc left over and hence we have quite a large amount of acid added to the solution so that it will get rid of all the extra zinc that was left over as well. So that means that at the end we need to rinse our copper and make sure that it's absolutely clean and then re-weigh it. You should find that within the realms of experimental error that the amount of copper you have at the end is the same as the amount that you started with and that proves to us very very concisely that mass is conserved during a chemical reaction. To check your understanding of all of this and make sure you know what is meant by conservation of mass, you might like to try the rags to riches quiz at the Kia website which is listed at the end of this video.